Live Text Access Training for Real-Time Interlingual Subtitlers This is Unit 1, Understanding Accessibility, Element 1, Basic Concepts. This video lecture focuses on multimodal communication, which is a specificity of audiovisual translation and live situations. My name is Sofia Bernabé from the Internationale Hochschule Este in München in Germany. I have prepared this video lecture in collaboration with the European Federation of Hard of Hearing, in short, EFO. On completion of this training sequence, you will be able to explain the concept of multimodal communication and to describe the challenges that real-time subtitlers and end users face. Let's take a look at the agenda. We start um, talking about what modes are in audiovisual translation and why communication is considered to be multimodal. Then we discuss uh, multimodality in the context of real-time interlingual subtitling and we also talk about the intricacies of conveying information through a mode that is not the original one. The concept of uh, multimodality seems easy to understand at first glance. In audiovisual translation, scholars such as Jorge Díaz Cintas classify modes into two categories, audio and video. Modes help us to classify in which way a specific resource is realized. In multimodal communication, resources are realized either visually or orally. Social linguists and semiotic scholars such as uh, Holiday, Kress or Van Loven explain that um, there are many different um, types of resources within a culture. These resources can be verbal, such as language, or nonverbal, such as gestures, images, sounds or objects, um, for example, clothes or food. Depending on the type of resource, a speaker um, can choose uh, the video or the audio mode for its realization. For instance, words are a resource that can be realized orally through the audio mode and visually um, by using subtitles, for example. When a message is rather rendered uh, multimodally, the audience needs to access both channels uh, to receive the complete message. However, this is not always the case. The reasons why one channel may not be available are manifold and can range from a noisy environment to a hearing loss. In such cases, alternatives need to be available. This is the essence of the work of audiovisual translators and the purpose of access services, that is, to provide an alternative way to access the information that is not reaching the audience through the original channel. Our job is to enable a diametric change from one mode to another, which has been described by Carlo Eugeni as diametric translation. For instance, um, dialogues or narrations that are rendered orally in an original can be conveyed visually using subtitles. In real-time uh, subtitling, subtitlers generate this visual information that is then added to the original resources that were already rendered visually. This change from one to another includes words and other resources that are necessary to understand a message. For example, sounds, contextual information, and identifying a speaker. For instance, at a conference, subtitlers may render sounds like an applause after a speech or a sound to which a speaker may react, such as siren from outside or someone sneezing or a loud bang in another room. This brings us to the challenges that real-time subtitlers face. The challenge of multimodality. The challenges that real-time subtitlers face in the process of rendering resources visually emerge from three main constraints. These are a limited amount of time and space for our subtitles and latency. 
Latency refers to the maximum delay or time by which subtitles should appear on a screen. Subtitles should coincide as much as possible with the speech on set. A minimum delay supports understanding and lip reading, which is an additional input cue that persons with hearing loss often use in communication. Some examples of uh, maximum delay in different contexts are six seconds for TV, six to eight seconds in Parliament, and three seconds at conferences. These constraints of real-time situations have clear implications for subtitlers, who will continuously have to choose what resources to render. These choices are influenced by how well organized a speaker is and how fast he or she speaks and by the working context. Let's see some examples. In Parliament, the most important features to be subtitled are, in this order, speed, we should be as verbatim as possible and without features of orality, such as tone or stress. Then, speaker identification. This is especially important because words need to belong to the actual speaker, otherwise diplomatic incidents could occur. Then, contextual information, which becomes key when voting takes place. In voting cases, the other resources, speech, speaker identification, slides, etc., are of less importance. Lastly, other materials. In Parliament, rarely happens that somebody bring things with him or her, such as pictures or slides. In most cases, this information is not relevant and will not be prioritized. Lastly, an example from conferences. At conferences, speech is also prioritized as um, it is in Parliament. Identifying a speaker is often less important in conferences because it is usually quite clear who is speaking, especially when only one speaker is on stage. However, identifying a speaker may be relevant when there is a debate and speakers start to switch. In these cases, identifying the speaker becomes more critical and subtitlers will have to pay more attention to mentioning the names. Another case of a speaker identification at conference would be when an interpreter says something for him or herself. For example, a simultaneous uh, interpreter may say, I cannot hear the speaker or the microphone is shut off. In such cases, it is a small challenge to show in your text a subtitler very clearly that this is something that the interpreter says and not the original speaker. Sounds like applause are often included in subtitles at conferences, whereas contextual information such as irony is less common because the interaction is live. Okay, let's recap now. Multimodal communication makes communication exciting and complex at the same time. Moreover, multimodality often requires a higher effort from both viewers and subtitlers. On the one hand, viewers or end users will perceive more information through the visual mode and at a pace that is set by the speaker. On the other, subtitlers continuously have to make choices about what resources should be rendered and when. Depending on the context, this will mean to add information or conversely to reduce or condense the message to provide subtitles in synchrony with the speech on set with a minimum delay. You will learn how to do this in Unit 5 and Unit 6 with our colleagues Vim Gerbex, Carlo Jenny, and Silvia Bellardi. As for now, I say goodbye. Exercises. The exercises for this video lecture are in the trainer's guide for Unis 1 and in the PowerPoint presentation. LTA Live Text Access Universitat Autonoma de Barcelona
SDI, Internationale Hochschule, Scuola Superiore per Mediatori Linguistici, ZDF Digital, European Federation of Hard of Hearing People FO, Velotype, Sub-T Access, European Certification and Qualification Association ECQA, co-funded by the Erasmus Plus program of the European Union. Erasmus Plus project 2018-1-DE01-KA203-004216. The information and views set on this presentation are those of the authors and do not necessarily reflect the official opinion of the European Union. Neither the European Union institutions and bodies, nor any person acting on their behalf, may be held responsible for the use which may be made of the information contained here.